Another video, another van. Atlantic Caravan, Murchison. That's how you say it. A lot of people ask us all the time, especially when we've got a lot of trade shows, like, oh, I've got this type of van. Like, is it possible to do what you do in like YouTube videos on our brand van, rah, rah, rah? Short answer is yes, it is possible on everything. On any kind of van, some are a little bit easier than others in respect to, especially like the last video with that retreat van, because we didn't have any access to the 240 AC. But again, I can show you on this one. So the 240 AC inputs up here, and we've got option one is to go up and down here, or option two is to go across the back and then down behind the fridge. Short answer is yes, just some are easier than others. Most of the time we'll always quote for like worst case scenario and then adjust it, which is what is exactly what I've done with this van this morning. So just uh, measured up the roof of solar, worked out what we've got for panels here, or if we're gonna have to order some in and wait for them. Locations for things like the Sirocco fans. So they wanna add two Sirocco fans. The wind up antenna on the roof, they want to delete. They did have BM Pro system, there. New Victron Servo screen going there. But again, we've only got that access, which needs to fit a USB cable and a HDMI. So it's gonna be tricky, but that's why you pay people that get way too excited over caravans like cars to do the work. Because we know what's, um, we know what works, we know what's, how the caravans are built. A lot of people just think, oh, like the new screen's gonna run off the old screen plugs that were already there not the case completely different setup got access to behind the bm pro genius unit which did do i'm not going to call it a dc charger because it's not but it has an aux battery input and then a separate solar they've only got one solar panel on the roof so all that's going to change we've got the under the bed area diesel heaters already on this side so i'm thinking we'll do electrical in this side and then they can keep that whole side for full storage again if it's not possible to get the hdmi on the usb up through that small pocket hole that we got there we can come all the way down and under the screen here read the water tanks so the water tank cables were up here. Now, they are all down here. I'll show you the roof very quickly. So like I said, it's a very actually nice clean roof. It's been well looked after this van, but it's just got the very slim single panel over there. Probably one of the most important parts, which will be similar to the leader video that we did the other week. Sorry, I just saw a rat on the train tracks. <laughs> Battery box is underneath the van. And it's got two 100 amp hour AGMs. We are going to be putting two 350 amp hour lithiums in, so 700 amp hours, and they want in the battery box. Not gonna fit on that one. So that battery box getting grinded off, the chassis will get re really like cold gal sprayed. And then we've got the welder coming in to put on this new box that I've ordered. It's a, um, it's the Carac battery box. This is a place in Melbourne where we got it from. Weld that new box on, and then the two 350s will fit in the new box and sit in there. The, the batteries are quite a bit taller, so that the new box will sit a tiny bit lower than that. But we have to do that because of the height of the batteries. So that's a bit of a rundown on the van. It's a 2016 model, I believe, but it's been quite well looked after. So yeah, give you an update. Let's see how we go. Beautiful sunny day here in Wollongong. Atlantic Caravan upgrade, big one, with a couple little nice accessories. So two 350 amp hour batteries. We changed the box, wired that up. 950 watts, solar on the roof. Got rid of the old antenna, put a catfish van antenna on. We've also done underneath the bed, it's got a 3 kVA multi plus, like pretty standard for what we do in all the caravans. Hooked up the AC shore power and the AC output so the whole van runs off grid with the 240 AC. Straight off those two 350 amp hour lithium batteries, a 70 amp solar controller to look after the roof. They all run in series. So we're getting 60 odd volts in through the roof array. And at the moment, I was charging at about 40 amps, which is fantastic. DC charger, standard, I've done a Starlink mini mod to this as well. And then a couple of other things, just like making sure that the breakaway system's hooked up to the battery system in the van, so it stays charged, all that jazz, because the customer was just going through the batteries on the breakaway units. The van came with BM Pro system, standard one, like so. And it had, one of these bad boys, which I'm sure anyone that's got a caravan would have seen in the past. 
got rid of this, but this one here, having the battery isolation, black switch, turns everything on. The lights and stuff didn't just turn on, but I'll do it again, ready? So lights on, switch on, black switch off. System turns off. So we still keep that function. And then the water pump switch on this, water pump is the bottom one. And then this also did the tanks, which are now on this screen. So everything we've been able to transfer to make work and then or on the Victron service screen. So super, super neat retrofit. Get rid of the old screen, just have one screen that has everything on it and is a much nicer screen, much better layout. And then just keeping things silly simple. So just, I've got to get labels, isolation switch and water pump switch. Easy done. Under the bed on this Atlantic, pretty stock standard for what we do. 3 kVA multi plus hooked up to the two 350 amp hour lithiums outside on the chassis rail. AC output circuit breaker, AC input circuit breaker up here. Cable run is down under the bed, across along the chassis underneath, up behind the fridge, and then up behind the uh, overheads, which you can see there. And the other black cable is for power up for the Sirocco fan, and we also did a Sirocco fan on this side. Swapped out the cowfish cigarette port there, and then the Vantana and stuff's on the roof, which I'll show you. But yes, so 3 kVA inverter, AC hooked up, DC hooked up, 300 amp manual reset circuit breaker, all nice and labeled there. Oh, and then we also added a power point here. So this is a brand new power point that we've added, double pole, as per AS3001. As we move over, we'll go over to solar controller. So that's doing the whole roof array in one unit, 15070 smart controller. So at the moment, the solar's putting in about 40 odd amps at around 50, 500 watts. Got solar, Circuit breaker as per AS3001, and then solar output fuse. You see DC charger here, alternator charger, DC charger output fuse, so between the DC charger and the auxiliary battery system. And then we've got another DC charger fuse here, which is from the Anderson plug on the front of the van to that. So that whole circuit is fully protected on the van side. Servo unit, stock standard for running the screen, and then RV electronic smart signal converter unit, four channel, which transfers the old tanks from this screen, rerun the tank cables, which actually were up here, and now they're down there, put them into the smart signal converter, wire the smart signal converter up to power and to the servo unit, and then the servo unit gives us our tank levels. Bloody brilliant. Very, very good bit of kit from Steve at RV Electronics. Very knowledgeable man and is very good at helping you out if you ever need help with anything. So big shout out to the RV Electronics team. Another thing that we did on this van, Starlink Mini. We're gonna post a separate little video of this because it's a fantastic setup. It's absolutely foolproof. You're never gonna have problems with voltage drop. Outside a hatch door where their TV usually goes. It just had a 10 amp circuit in here for a cigarette socket. We've kept that cigarette socket in here added the converter. Now at the moment that's off because I've got that black isolating switch inside off. I'm gonna turn that back on and now that styling device is on, okay? You can just use the cable that it comes with or buy one of our Element 3 ones so it'll handle just the weather better because they're a nice thicker cable that handle the UV better. Plug her in, male to male, run your Starlink out. You can run it on a bloody 20 meter lead if you want because out of that converter, it's actually got 30 volts to this plug here. So you're never gonna have problems with voltage drop. And like I said, you can even use the little thin cable that it does come with. And then to turn this on and off, you can either use the isolating switch inside, but you just unplug and plug, you're turning it on and off. It's not gonna use much power at all sitting there on standby. So yeah, very good bit of kit. All right, batteries. You would have seen old box in the last video, new box. Now that we've gotten Welded on by our welder. Shout out to Ryan, the legend. Bolt them batteries in, clamping them down. So they're not gonna go anywhere, but then also nice cover on here. And the cover's even got a hole for the lock. So you got two 350 amp hour chassis mounted batteries here. So 700 amp hours all up, which is massive amount of juice. You got a fuse panel up there, which did, instead of having all those inline fuses come off the batteries, we did 
a fuse panel up the top there, nice and heat shrunk everything. And our shunt is also up under here as well. So fantastic little setup. Anderson plug is just the input output. So you can plug a blanket into that, but you need to have a regulator in line or you can use it as output, run a fridge, compressor, whatever you need. Alrighty, so as you can see, we've got a brand new roof up here. Just had one panel over there. It was like a 170 water, I think. Old antenna was there. Have fully sealed that up. Cable tied up the cable, so it's nice and neat. And then it plugs in to the van tenner on the other side. Van tenner sits in the middle. I had to offset it a bit just for the cable length, but the way that we've laid out the solo is so that if they really want to add more, you get another panel here. So you've got two, 250, another 250, and a 200 here. Like I said, they're all running together, so it's 950 watts total. The 200 watt runs at 18 volts. The other ones are 18.3, so you have a little bit of voltage difference, or 18.6, I think, are the 250 watters. They're getting roughly 97% efficiency across the solar array. Yeah, I'll show you it on the screen in a second, but you can't get much better than that, to be honest, for what space is available. The lesser amount of panels at a bigger wattage you do, the better it's going to be. You can play Tetris and spend bloody thousands and go bananas on the solar, but you don't need to. These guys have got a lot of power, yes, but I don't agree with a lot of things that people say online where they say you've got to have X amount of solar with X amount of batteries. If you've got the real estate for it, just use the area. If you've got the budget for it, just use the money, spend the money and get it done because you can never have too much solar. Your solar controllers are programmed to charge a lithium battery. They're not going to overcharge it. I think I, I have people come up to us all the time at trade shows and whatnot and be like, oh, if I've got 300 amp hours of lithium, I should have 600 watts of solar. No, it doesn't matter. Irrelevant. Anyway, <laughs> enough about that. Okay, so solar we're going to look at. It's a little bit low at the moment, but you can see 50 volts in, 3.6 amps, and we're charging at 13 amps. If I go to history, the most that we've seen today is 627 watts. So considering it's spring now, it's not too bad. Realistically, yeah, they've got 950 watts at 97% efficiency. It's 923 watts, I think, when I did the math. Um, so realistically, in Australian conditions, sun, get, sun gets the solar panels hot become less efficient because they're hotter. Um, so I would say anything above 800 watts is a pass mark to be seen 600 already on a day like today in spring, absolutely pass mark 100% for this solar system. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, ask them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. And um, keep an eye out for that other little Starlink mini video because like the system that we did there is like literally foolproof. You, you, <laughs> you can't bugger it up. It's, um, it's perfect for caravanners.